So let's do face recognition. So we saw two papers about face detection and alignment and attribute predictions. Let's go back to face recognition and face verification. These are the typical data sets that you're going to work with. And we had two methods. One was from Facebook. One was the type of methods from Google. One of them was using a softmax type of loss. The other one was using a, a triplet type of loss. And they're going to give you different type of features. One of them is going to give you separable features. The other one is trying to give you as discriminative features as possible. What do I mean? These discriminative features are trying to give you inter-class dispersion. So you want to separate these as much as possible from different classes or different identities. And intra-class compactness is trying to make these as compact as possible. And let's see why softmax is not enough to give you discriminative features. This is your softmax loss. What do we have here? This is just a sigmoid. You have your features from the ice example. So this is your ice data point, ice image, and it's gonna belong to its corresponding class or corresponding identity. You are gonna pick the corresponding column from a W matrix. And these XIs are actually after you take your image and push it through your neural network, and then you're stopping at the feature level. This is the final layer of your neural network. You are looking at the final layer, at the last layer. B is your bias. M is the size of your mini batch. So I is counting your data. Y I is the corresponding class for this particular featureized image. N is the number of classes or total number of identities. And then let's look at a simple example, MNIST. Let's create a simple CNN. It's gonna take as input an image. It's gonna output a vector in two dimension. And then from two dimension, you're gonna go to 10 dimension because you have 10 classes. But let's focus on the, at the feature level. You have activation of your first neuron, which is dimension one of this vector, activation of the second neuron. And then you can visualize your data. And then you can color code them, color code them according to their class. And you can see that your softmax loss is giving you the separable type of features. And then you can see that even further when you look at your test data. This was your training data, this is your test data. And then you can see that there are some confusions going on. And this is important, especially when the identities in your test data are not part of your training data and you want to identify them. Is this the same person or not? So that's an open set problem. The other one is useful when you have closed set. It's enough to be separable, but here you want them to be discriminative. And it's not. If you show it new data, there is gonna be some confusion. And this paper is introducing the center loss. How does it work? You're gonna have a loss per each class, per each identity, you have a vector. This could, you can think of this as the center of the images in that class. And then you're gonna write down, you're trying to match these features. In, an, in a mean squared error sense. And as I mentioned, CYI, YI is the corresponding class for image XI. You want the features of image XI to be close to the center of that class. You have a similar type of loss when you're doing clustering. So this is not only you're doing classification, which is this loss, you're also doing some clustering at the same time. So you're trying to make your images as close as possible to the center of that cluster. So it's a combination of the softmax loss and the center loss. And let's see what we get. Depending on the strength of your lambda, this parameter here, these are all on your test data. Your images are going to keep clustering around their corresponding centers. And then you're going to get more discriminative features. And this is useful. When you have a new image coming in, that's an open set problem. And let's say the images of two people go in and they fall within this cluster. And then you're gonna know for sure that these are the same people. But here, it's gonna end up being confusing. Again, you're gonna look at uh, label faces in the wild. That's one of your data. These are the same people. Whenever you have a green border, when you have a red border, these are different people. Same, different. And that's how you're gonna train this algorithm. The architecture, like any other convolutional neural network is a bunch of convolutions and pullings, but we know that local features matter when it comes to faces. 
because the local statistics around eyebrows are different from nose. And then you're going to have your soft max and the, the center loss. And then you're going to balance the two. Then you can start comparing to deep face, face net. They have a lot of data. This 2.6 million is the paper that we covered right after deep face and face net. This is going to give you your data set to train. There is going to be a data for Baidu, which we don't have access to. You can have different models, and then you're going to get much better performance because these features are more separable. They're more discriminative. And in terms of studying the importance of Lambda, you can keep looking at your verification accuracy. And the question is, what Lambda should I choose? You look at this curve, and then you're going to pick the maximum, the one that's going to give you the maximum performance. I think it's a good time for me to stop. And for those of you who have questions, I'll be around.